Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So, I'm gonna see if this is gonna work. I kind of have the mic right here in front of my face to see if this is gonna change the audio or make the audio better. And if it makes it worse, I'm sorry. But, um, today, because, um, the day I'm recording this, which is Tuesday the 25th, it's gonna be 17's 6th anniversary since, like, debut. So I kind of want to draw something 17 related and because I'm going to be posting, like, posting this on Wednesday, which is actually their um, debut anniversary in like my time zone because that'll be the 26th here, but it's the 26th in Korea right now. So I kind of want to draw something 17 related. So I think I'm going to just draw any 17 thing that I wanted to draw in the past maybe. Um, but I've been trying tackling more 17 pieces. Like here I'm trying to draw Mingyu and Wonu, which they don't really look like them. I had to fix up some of the colors on their face and fix the shadows a bit more, but I wanted to do something for Bittersweet, uh, which I'm super excited for. But um, let's try drawing Dogyam first. I kind of want to draw him from the Hitori Janai music video and kind of draw with that gigantic cake um, that they're kind of like celebrating together, which I think is really cute. So let's just start. Okay, that was my mistake. Um, I actually had my hand on the keyboard. I've been working more on the tablet. So I had my hand on the keyboard out of inst like instinct and I kind of just pressed the space bar and it kind of cut off my recording, but because I want to draw just I just want to draw cute stuff today but like at this point like when do I not want to draw cute stuff because I honestly feel like I'm breathing into the mic okay but I'm gonna keep these quite simple probably unless I feel like I'm just gonna draw the dogam one there's some other ones that I kind of want to draw like we could draw Josh or Joshua from falling flower with a beautiful kind of like lacy top and then with the flowers kind of like bandaged to his cheek. Okay, the mic being in front of my face is throwing me off. So. It's a two layered, two tier, two tiered cake. really cute looking too. It has like a nice gradation of pink to blue going from each layer like pink to blue, pink to blue. I always do like these bag shapes for roses. I think like I started some chibi versions of the scene. So there's a scene where Dogem's in the middle and then all the members are kind of like surrounding him and like a funny kind of looking zoom call. FaceTime esque layout and yeah I wanted to draw all of them as chibis but I think I'm gonna make them into like stamp stickers again maybe I'll do that instead and scrap that whole idea just because I feel like I'm too late <laughs> that's why I feel like I need to get over is the fact that sometimes when I draw fan art I feel like it's outdated and I like to make stuff when like as soon as it comes out if I can but I need to get over that I, I should just draw what I want to draw and then post whatever okay so i think part of the reason why i wanted to do this one is the lighting's kind of cute it's really warm near his face because of the candles being lit and i really like how they style dogyam's hair i'm a sucker for whenever they kind of like curl or make their hair wavy i just think it looks super soft and super cute i keep talking about wanting to do more like derpy crude 17 animations but i keep running into the same issue of not being able to finish them and i feel like it's like the same problem of not being on time i miss interacting with more carrots like i feel like i've been drawing 17 fan art like on and off now and even though 17 gives me like the most like happiness and drawing or like serotonin boosts whenever I see them and stuff and just I don't know I haven't been drawing them much lately maybe I need to do more of like a deep dive into 
how I want to stylize them again. I think like ever since I started doing more drawings on the iPad, the way that I've drawn the members have changed. I feel like I should put his hands in here somewhere because this looks awkward. So you see, let's see how I can do this. Because sometimes I feel like I make the hands really stiff looking, especially if it's from the side. Just because of how I splay out the fingers, they're very... They look very forced, so we'll see how this goes. I mean, it could be worse. At least it looks like a hand. Now that I'm thinking about it, I was like, April to May has quite a bit of time for like carrots and stuff. Just because from like April, beginning of April is like Mingyu's birthday. And then we kind of have like a grace period of no events, I guess, to worry about until like late May for their anniversary. But then for June until like August, it's busy again. So we have Hoshi's birthday as well as June's birthday. So we have June and then Hoshi and then we have Wanu and then us Coops. This is just for fun. This is just for fun. I feel like you should always just take some time to draw for yourself if you haven't, especially like people who've made drawing less of a hobby should try to find some time to just draw whatever you want to draw. I feel like I'm falling into the trap of like drawing stuff to post, drawing stuff to show people or like for products and stuff and because of that I don't draw everything that I want to draw that's just for fun. Because even recently, I've been drawing more Genshin stuff and it's fun and all, but I feel like part of it's because I want to make sure that if I ever do fan art of them again, it'll come to me a little bit more easier. Also, thank you to the people who are letting me know about that. There's a game fashion archive. Oh my god, it's a lifesaver. Like, I can see a lot of accessories and stuff up close. And I don't know if I'm going to be drawing Mona or Lisa. Maybe I should have said it in that order. But we'll see. Or maybe we'll draw Klee. Who knows? Who knows? What is this? This is his arm. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, I was talking about the potential streaming schedule being a little bit wonky. So I might stream tomorrow, or, hmm, I don't know exactly when I'm going to stream actually, so just make sure you just look for the notification or keep an eye on the community post. I think I'm just most excited to paint his hair. But yeah, I think I'm going to do late night streaming. So my time is always an MST, so that's Mountain Standard Time. And I think it'll be like 11 p.m. or so, if not like midnight or afterwards. But because I stream for like, I stream for like two to three hours every time. So hopefully I can keep that up even if I do late night streams. And I'll be resuming the drawing music videos in my style a little bit. In the future because there's some golden child music videos i would like to do because they have some really cute color palettes and i'm sp like specifically talking about like pump it up that blue and yellow was really pretty but there's like a scene in that music video i find very cute and i think it's like tag faints and bowman's like hiding behind the popcorn bag while like jang jun was like laughing hysterically and then why is just like looking at like fainted tag and i'm just like what is going on i forgot about that music video i don't think i mentioned this but it's like been raining a lot recently so it's a bit gloomy today but i'm listening to 17's campfire because i i just like the warmth um from that song so i thought it'd be fitting for today just because today feels a lot gloomy so it's like why not cheer yourself up and yeah, the lighting hasn't been that good, but I have the window open. Or, yeah, the blinds open. So, 
the lighting might change a little bit but hopefully like hopefully it's gonna be a little bit more consistent compared to the past videos where the sun is having like a literal field day let's just color this and see how it goes so i'm gonna duplicate this i'm gonna hide this one and save this one for a backup i'm gonna change the first one and hit it to multiply I'm just going to switch this to a higher saturation, a little bit darker, and I'm going to change it probably closer to brown. So we'll see how this color reacts. Um, the background color, I'm going to lean it towards a cooler color, I think. Let's lean it to like a cooler beige color for now. And I'm going to add the background colors first and an indication of a painting in the background. So first I'm going to add these shadows. I was thinking of opening the window so maybe you guys can hear the rain, but there's so many loud cars recently. Okay, so I think the painting is kind of around here. I'm gonna erase this. I'm gonna leave the lines pretty sharp for this painting part just because I am gonna be blurring the background just to make it pushed in the back and I'm super lazy to draw the background so that's what we're gonna do and this way and then we have like a periwinkle-ish blue color And the shadow and then because of where the shadow hits closer where the painting is we're gonna make it look like there's a little bit more depth there I didn't realize how crooked it was okay so I'm just gonna blur the background Just the Gaussian blur I'm gonna make this a little bit larger just to fill up more of the space and I think that's it over the background so let's just quickly put in some colors for Dogam and then we can move on so there's kind of two light sources going on here so we have one from the candlelight which is kind of on this underside so I'm just gonna lightly blend this in the lines are actually a little too dark so Lighten it up. I'm gonna bump up the saturation. I think that's okay. I'll grab a kind of like a lighter saturated orangey color, kind of like. So we can get this kind of yellowy glow. Some areas. I'm gonna add more saturated, actually less saturated. We're gonna go into like the brownish purplish area. Add a darker shadow first, and then we can knock it back a little bit more with kind of like a purpley blue color. I'm just basically experimenting at this point. This ear should be in shadow. So I'm kind of playing a little bit with how I stylize things as well. Um, so this side of the hand would be dark. to his lips. So his lips are obviously a little bit more red because so there's a lot more pigmentation. So I'm going to add first and then the bottom lip. Even though it technically is also getting hit by the light, it's still fairly pigmented and quite dark. I'm actually changing his mouth a little bit, so I'm gonna make this darker. Look how weird he is. 
he didn't have the teeth showing a little bit. Upper teeth. I'm gonna throw in his lower teeth. Kind of like shrinking and tilting his eyes a little bit more. His eyes are a little too wide. Putting a little bit of a highlight right where his eyelids are. Kind of looks a little creepy at this point. So I'm just gonna put down the base color for this. Next I'm gonna add is the shadow color. So I'm gonna deepen it and I'm gonna actually add more kind of like reddish brown into it. Just because it is a little, like supposed to be a little bit more of like warmer lighting. So, but, but we can push it a little bit by kind of using a little bit of cooler shadows in there too. And brighten it up. I'm using kind of like a really bright mustard yellow at this point to do kind of a highlight. I'm going to do the gradation on the cake. A little bit more darker. So we have pink in this section, and then we need serenity color on the bottom. And then let's put his hair color, which is actually like a purpley gray blue color. Can we go a little darker? And in some lightings it almost looks like a dark, almost like turquoise -y teal color. I don't know how to describe this color. It's like a steel blue. Like I said, it's a lot more intense for you guys. Let me see if I can show you guys. So if I turn down the settings. For the hair, this is probably more accurate. This is probably the most accurate for his hair, but yeah, as you can see, none of these colors look correct now on the screen. Everything looks washed out, but this is now look more accurate on the camera. But now this doesn't look correct, but we just have to live with it. So I'm gonna bring this in a little bit into some other areas and we're gonna bring this color into the lighter area so we can kind of have a more seamless transition before we start adding the actual highlights and the actual shadows. So for highlights, I'm leaning it towards, we're going closer to green at this point because I'm more into like the purple end on that side. Because his hair is a little bit more like curly and wavy and I don't want to get rid of that texture by putting like just a band or like across his head. It's a little bit more muted or not muted, more darker in this case. I'm basically just shading with like a gray and a good chunk of his hair is actually in shadow here so we can shade a lot of this in. And I'm gonna take a bit of the skin color. I'm taking kind of like the mid-tone of the skin color right here. Adding that a little bit to his hair just to make everything look a little softer. Now, if you're doing this with like normal layers and you're not going for like the more painterly look, like the way how I usually do stuff, you can definitely just use an airbrush. And airbrush the skin color over top of their hair and then lower the opacity to give it that softer look. It'll definitely be softened more if you change the line colors. Just quickly do the cream of the cake. The diamonds. Might have been a little too pink, but we can we can change it. And I'm looking at this, this looks like more like horror. <laughs> 
You mentioned to make the lighting a little bit softer. I feel like lighting is always like something I'm struggling with. So I think the last intense lighting I did was for Hoshi's. And painting him was a bit of a struggle because I was relying on... Let's see if I can show this. Where am I struggling with this? So I did the background color first. So you can see. Just because so I can find the skin tone that matches with this kind of like atmosphere for him. Because it was quite dark, but he's also like backlit. Hmm. Even this one I'm still struggling with, as you can see. I don't think his skin tones are correct, especially for their lips. They look a little bit too saturated. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to fix that. I think Mingyu's works a little bit better, but I need to fix Monu's face and stuff. I'll probably finish this on stream or something. But I think considering how long this video might take, I don't think I can squeeze in Falling Flower Josh. So maybe that saves up for another session and do like a complete drawing for it. Should I make this touch here? Maybe that makes more sense. Cause this is like, if I'm thinking about this plane, this is like your cheek part that goes down. Let's just, actually, I might do a quick cheat. So I'm gonna use addition. I'm gonna pick a softer brush. And we're just gonna Actually, let's see, let's merge this down. And then here we're gonna clip this. Add a brighter light. And then I'm gonna add a, a cooler light on this side. Don't make it too bright. Kind of make this a little bit make more sense. But I'm also gonna dim it a little bit so it's not as harsh. And I'm gonna merge that down and we can actually start to render everything. I think in terms of like 17's anniversary, I think I only missed one year. And that's because I was too ambitious for what I was trying to do. So I think at the time, it was, so their third anniversary, I think, was just after Thanks. Which means that if you include Shining Diamond, I think, you would have nine eras for Seventeen. Or like different comebacks. And I did a humongous chibi watercolor illustration for that, but I never finished and it was kind of around the time when I was preparing for a convention too so I never had enough time to actually finish it. So I think that's the only year I technically didn't draw anything for their anniversary, I think. And I think like there shouldn't be any pressure to draw anything for like a fandom. So the three brushes that I usually use is kind of like the step-by-step -step that I go through to finish usually any of these drawings on the iPad. So in this order, I use this for sketching, I use this for all the base colors or like the initial coloring, and then I do everything for rendering usually just with the sharp render brush. Yeah, I think I'm most excited to paint his hair. I just love like curly, kind of wispy fluffy hair. It's darkening up his lips because on this side technically it's supposed to be darker. I'm gonna make sure the lips kind of follow the corner of the mouth so we don't look like we have clown makeup. This side's good to have either a reference or to learn the actual planes of the face because technically like there are cheekbones like here right i'm like trying to prevent myself from touching the hair till i finish this 
hopefully finish this part at least. I knew I was using the wrong brush. There's no way I would be at this weird size. I think it's like, I need to get better at not being so picky with some of this stuff. Also, what is with these fingers? I was gonna have six fingers here. Or five fingers. Plus a thumb. That would be a little bit embarrassing. I think- I don't remember which post it was. I think it's like back when Woozy's like leaning up against Jonghan because he was sleepy at the ISAC one year when they're really like wearing their yellow outfits and I think I had Jonghan's hand on like Woozy's shoulder and I gave him six fingers or like five fingers including a thumb so it would have been like this like oh geez actually I'm quite I'm I'm curious Oh, okay. I was gonna say, like, did I accidentally draw the hand with six without realizing it? No, that one line coming down was just me... Like, it's this line. Whoops. It's this line. So that makes sense. Okay. I wasn't going crazy while doing the sketch. This technically makes more sense, but this looks ugly. <laughs> hmm. Well, ugly didn't hurt anyone, so that's okay. Is this better? Is this blown out? <laughs> I think it's better. I'm gonna add a little bit of a... Highlight. Gonna make the lighting... A lot brighter. Oh, that's what's blown out. It's these. <laughs> it's all of these. Yeah, I didn't need the soft brush to do that. This this one works. Just as fine, if not better? Question mark? Like, this looks more like a flame, right? Not these ones. Ah, excuse me as I shrink these into a more desirable shape. A desirable shape for a candle sounds really dumb. Do people care about shapes of candles, though? I guess, like, I'm dealing with the flames, so, like... It doesn't, it's not even applicable here. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna move on. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move on. I just wanna paint his hair. Like, <laughs> that's all I care about. So I kinda wanna have the lighter lines for his hair near his face, just to make it look a lot softer. Almost blended that light yellow into his hair a little too much. I forgot like that was gonna be kind of almost like a rim lighting on his hair. Is the mic sound like just inconsistent? Because I can't tell if like I'm backing up instinctively so I can see over the mic. Got a one chunk of hair done. I still think hair is like my favorite part the render. Cause like you can get away with a lot of colors. Can I get rid of his eyebrows? I feel like I went silent just because I heard a loud car go by and I'm like, if I talk then I'm probably gonna try my best to include it into the, like, the video footage and stuff but if I don't talk it's like 80% I know I will cut it out. Yeah, but the weather's been super gloomy lately, which doesn't really bother me. Maybe it's just because like I don't see rain as being gloomy per se. I'm just glad it's not snowing because like the amount of rain that we've been getting, it would be insane if it the temperature was cool enough for it to snow like it did like a few weeks ago. 
Or is it a week ago? Line art for hair is like a hassle. Because I feel like at that point you have to make sense of the hair. And I feel like I can just bullcrap my way through hair looking decent. So let's focus on this side first. Get in more of the necessary lines. And then we can move on to the, the right side. We can kind of more or less pick or choose to leave some details in or get rid of them completely. Kind of like this and then just do a quick outline at the top of the hair and Yes, I think that's about it. I'm just gonna quickly fix the shape up here. I honestly thought like I was gonna make this video talking more about 17. Um, today, well I guess like when I'm posting this, eh, the new episode of Going 17 I think will be out. I don't know if they're doing anything. Oh wait, <laughs> they're screwed. Wait a second. I don't know if that's next week's video but Aren't they going to like what it looks like a deserted island? And I don't know who was holding it. I think it's Mingyu who's holding it, but wasn't he holding like a makeup box? And that was like one of the arguments I think Seventeen made during debate night number was it number one or number two? About being in a like deserted island and all you have is like like a like a small kit or something, like a makeup kit or something like that. That was the episode they probably pulled the idea from. Because the whole premise of this year is going 17 or this season, I guess is it considered a season of going 17? Is that the PDs, like the producers, chose anything that 17 has said and made an episode going around that. And I think that's very interesting and like a very good idea for the producers because Seventeen says the wildest stuff because they can literally twist a lot of things to make different concepts like the one where was it Seungwan who said he just wishes once that they could beat Jonghan at something kind of like 12 versus 12 versus 1 okay let's get rid of his other eyebrow and then I'll throw them back in because I'm like one of those artists that do you put the eyebrows above the hair but I don't like doing it in such a like a harsh way if that makes sense. Picks up these little wispy hairs coming from the side. Kind of blend them in to the rest of the hair a little bit. We'll, we'll do it very vaguely. So I'm gonna add kind of like a brownish pink. It's like the little base. Like I think I like, I feel like I'm okay drawing physical things for like cream and stuff because I've done 17 as little bakers for a 17 food scene. If I have the image I'll put it up but if I don't then you can just imagine just tiny 17 a very pink um, composition. So I'm not gonna follow the cream pattern or like whatever icing tip they use for the edges of the cake and look the little designs and stuff because I don't want to meticulously like meticulously render each little dollop of whipped cream or icing or whatever they're using. So I didn't notice when I switched brushes. It's quickly outlining bit of the are you saying? Uh, hate when that happens. That's why I feel like if you ever do anything like super important in Procreate, and you haven't lifted up your pen in a long time, you should just randomly tap somewhere with your pencil before moving on. Kind of fix this icing, cream, whatever it is, a little bit more. Be funny. I, I don't know why. I just thought of like people who have said like, "Oh, I love like how you draw flowers," and I'm just thinking like, "Have you seen these?" 
Have you seen these yet? It's not save me for myself. I shouldn't have done this. I'm having... I'm having regrets. I made matcha cookies, actually. I forgot about that. I'm trying to bake more. And I don't have any culinary grade, like matcha powder. But I have just matcha green tea powder and I think it worked just fine. Get rid of some of these lines. And I think we are almost done. I I don't know why I said I wasn't gonna... Or why I was gonna say? Why I did say. That makes more sense. Why I did say that I was gonna do two in one day and not like finish this, I guess. I mean, I was partially right. But, knowing myself, I wasn't gonna stop after coloring like majority of it. Because if I left any other part just like not technically rendered, like even this is quite janky, but at least it kind of fits in a little bit better. Then, you know, I, I should have just known that I wasn't gonna stop at that point. This is kind of dumb of me. Put one last one here. That's it. I am- I'm done. I am not gonna touch this anymore. <laughs> so do a quick run through of this sketch. I even kind of drew him a little derpy because like I drew him quite his face just quite quickly because I thought I wasn't gonna put too much detail. Duplicated the hands, put in the cake, simple background, blurred it, made a new layer, did the base colors, and I real like pretty much all the shading, everything on one layer, just because it's easier for me to manage. And then after that, I added extra lighting to the center. Cleaned up the lines more. And this is where basically everything is just starting to be rendered and cleaned up. Fixed up the hair more. Added back his brows and the heck is this? All of the cake. Yeah, very lazily done, but he is done. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me draw Dogyam just to kind of celebrate a little bit of 176th anniversary since debut. So yeah, if you're a fellow carrot, let me know so I know how many of you actually do watch my videos and stuff because it's kind of nice to know that other carrots still follow me even though I've been kind of swaying back and forth from doing 17 art and non-17 art. But yeah. Um, I'll talk to you guys next time with another video. Bye!